Well, the first thing I do is whip out my pair of Oakley 3D glasses, <laughs> which are really comfortable to wear, and they look just like really cool sunglasses. That usually ends a lot of the argument right there. But if it doesn't, um, you know, you can always point out that every new technology coming in has had its detractors. There's every time when color first came in, there were a lot of naysayers. Color will destroy movies. You can't tell stories in color. You need black and white. I think when sound came in, there was the same argument. There were, there were a lot of people going, oh, this is terrible. We're going to have to hear actors speak. It's, it's, it's a disaster for the business. Every new technology coming in has had a set of detractors, and those are people who are rigidly gripping and clutching the old ways. Why? Fear of moving into new ways, fears of trying new things. So there's always a group of people who will say, oh, it'll never work. It's impossible. You can't do that. Most of the time, they're wrong. Sometimes they're right. Most of the time, they're wrong. In this case, they're very wrong. This train has left the station. 3D television is coming in. The good news is you have a choice. If you don't want to watch it in 3D, that's your choice. You don't have to. But the fact is, sports done properly, and let's underline the word done properly, is incredibly compelling in 3D. You can suddenly see, you know, if we're talking about golf, you can see the slope of the green and why the ball rolled that way and why the golfer is choosing to take out a wedge instead of a putter even though he's sitting on the apron. I mean, it's clear to you that the apron is tilted, whereas in a 2D shot, it's a flat shot. You can't tell, so you guess because of other depth clues that he's taking out the wedge because, oh, the apron must be sloped. You can see the roll of the fairway. You can see how deep the sand traps are. You know, if golf is a game of a ball being hit through a volume of space, a golf course, there's nothing better to see that with in 3D. And the same goes for football, whether it's American football or the kind where they actually use their feet. Um, you know, there's basketball. Almost every sport lends itself because sports are always about a group of people working in a volume of space, and nothing shows that volume of space better, and nothing shows the speed of the athlete or the power of the athlete as well as seeing it in 3D because it's, you're there, you're present. 3D seems to, in general, like to, a slower pace at it because people have more to look at in the shot. You know, I went, when I went to film school, we were taught a style of editing, and it actually had a name. It was the George Lucas School of Editing. And, you know, the theory behind that is you hold a shot long enough to impart all the information, and then you cut to the next shot. In 3D, there's more information contained within the shot, so it makes sense then that you'd hold it for longer. The over-the-shoulder shot is not going to go away. The reaction shot is not going to go away. But you might include more things in the frame to help tell your story. In, in other words, let me give you an example of that. You know, we might decide to include, there's two characters in a coffee shop, and they're at somewhat at odds with each other. And so we might include in the background, now this is kind of getting deep into movie making tricks, but you know, we might, behind one character, we might only have square objects, picture frames, square menus, wh whatever it is, but not leave any round objects in the shot. Behind the other character, we might put all the round objects, the clocks, the, the smaller, softer things. And at some point, as they come to reconciliation, we'll start to switch those around. The audience will feel something's about to change just because the, shot, the grammar of the shots change. In 3D, we could leave some of that in because it just creates more of the environment so we can communicate subliminally to our audience a little bit more of what they should be feeling even before the characters reveal it. It's why in a movie, you're watching a movie and you know something's going to happen to the main character. That's filmmaker tricks. It, it's, it's conveying something to the audience in terms of what they should feel long before they actually feel it. So when that boom moment comes, you really are startled because you, you're, you're nervous for this character. That's a filmmaker's art. There are a couple of things that will give you that traditional 3D headache, which we're all aware of. I mean, one of the main things has now gone away. There were the different colored glasses, the red-green glasses, because they provided a different image to your left eye than your right eye. Yes, there was separation, so you did have some depth. But anything that differs between your left eye and your right eye is what starts to give you a headache. So if the vertical alignment of the two cameras is off, in other words, when those two pictures are overlaid, but one's just three pixels higher than the other one, that's, then one eye has to tilt up and one eye tilts down. 
<clears throat> unless you're a lizard, that's not normal for people. <laughs> so it starts to give you a headache. Yeah. If the, you know, when you take off your glasses and you look at a 3D picture, <clears throat> you see there's two objects. If suddenly those two objects are this far apart, your eyes have to turn outward to see them. Well, lizards are good at that, people are not, so you start to get a headache. There's too much depth that gives you a headache. One of the big things was editing, because you could be looking at a shot that's this deep, and in a 30th of a second or 25th of a second here, here on this side of the, the ocean, um, the shot goes this deep, and then in the next shot it goes this deep, and your eyes don't transition. They snap to those new positions because the picture snaps to those new positions. And that's calisthenics to your eyes, which aren't used to that because everything is a, everything we do normally. If I look at you and then I look out that window, my eyes reconverge out that window. They don't snap to what's out there. So it's that jumping of your eyes across the edits was definitely a cause of headaches. And that first trick of 3D, which is to make you sort of lean back because something appears to hit you in the face. If there's a, a reason in the story, for th this, yeah. it has its place. Again, everything needs to be story driven because that tends to be what, what, where content settles. When there's gratuitous effects, if you remember the early days of Dolby 5.1, filmmakers were spinning the sound around the rooms and oh my God, we almost all keeled over from dizziness. And that settled down after a while. And, and the whole reach off the camera into your face that's settling down now. So it's not forbidden, it's just being used, it's being used more sparingly, it's being used for effect. And yes, it is a great effect. And to some extent it's used in every show because the audience expects some of it. And it is the kind of wow factor of 3D. But when it's overused, like every shot has to come off the screen like that. You know, one is it, it is tiring on your eyes to do that. So if you do it um, a limited, if you limit how much you do that, it's a lot more comfortable for the audience and then let their eyes rest for a little bit before you do that again. What you're doing is you're forcing people's eyes to stay focused on the screen, but you're forcing their eyes to turn in to follow that object, which is what gives us the impression that it's coming forward. Because when our eyes are turned in, our brain thinks, well, that object is close to me. Because when you're looking at something in the distance, your eyes are parallel. When things come closer to you, they turn in. So by forcing the eyes to turn in on an object, it appears to be very close to the audience. But you can only do so much of that before you give people a headache. Stu, great to talk to you. Thank you very much for your time. I'm going to reach Thank past you. my 2D camera, look, and there's a shot. There's a great shot in, in 3D. This shot would be great in 3D. <laughs>